Hello, this and my other YouTube videos are extracted from the History of Man series, currently six books published in print, ebook, and most importantly, audiobook. I'm a storyteller, and if you like these video stories, you'll love the History of Man series audiobooks. Great for commuting or just sitting back and relaxing. And unlike a novel you've read where you know the ending, you can listen to these books on tape more than once. There's so much to learn. Available on Amazon and audible.com, I narrate the audiobooks. And the best part about that is you can listen to these stories without having to look at my stupid face. And with that said, let's get the show on the road. Hello, I'm John Bershoff with another installment of the History of Man series. Today's subject, the Black Death. The Black Death was famous and infamous, the granddaddy of all pandemics. Now, a pandemic is an infection that rages in multiple countries, crosses oceans and, and lakes and seas, whereas an epidemic tends to just be in one area, one country. And an endemic is an infection that just percolates in one area, doesn't really go anywhere else, that numbers go up and down, wax and wane. But pandemics involve the entire world, sort of like COVID. Now, the Black Death was a plague in the 14th century. From 1346 to 1353 AD, eight years, terrorizing and killing people over that eight year span. DNA analysis from unearthed corpses in more recent times has shown that the culprit was a Yersinia pestis bacteria. The vector was a flea that lives on rodents with cloth and silk. And that's how it got into humans the bite of a flea injecting the bacteria. Now, this particular plague possibly originated in China, but in China it was kind of a, a low gray, low virulent infection. It picked up steam and virulence as it crossed Central Asia and Eurasian steppes and all those stands, the Mongolia, Manchuria, Southern Asia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, and other stands. And why did it pick up steam as it was traveling? Well, it traveled along the Silk Road and the spice trade. This was before the Ottoman Empire had closed off the Silk Road and the spice trade that went through the Middle East to the Bosporus and into Europe. It's what launched the Age of Discovery with ships sailing to find a path to the Far East because the traditional Silk Road was closed off. But these fleas and rodents with the plague in them were then transferred by merchant ships, either across the Bosphorus into Thrace, Greece, or aboard Italian ships that sailed around Greece into Italy. Either way, the plague entered Europe, France, Germany, Spain, Portugal, and it was very virulent that really picked up steam. It traveled through the Middle East. It went across the Maghreb into Egypt, Carthage, Tunisia, Morocco, Marrakesh, Casablanca, and up into Spain. Spain got it from both directions, from France in the north and from Carthage in the south. Now, there have been other plagues. The word plague doesn't necessarily mean Yersinia pestis. A plague can mean any type of infection or it can mean something else, like a grown son who won't leave home is a plague upon his parents. Infections, and there'll be another episode of the History of Man series, we'll talk about how infections affected the outcome of wars, or partially affected. But one interesting one was the Peloponnesian Wars of 431 to 404 BC that featured Athens, mighty Athens against Sparta, and it featured typhus, a bacteria. The Spartans won that war, although they shouldn't because Athens should have been a more powerful country, but Athens' army was depleted because so many were sick with typhus, allowing for Sparta to win. 
but I digress. We'll talk about that in another episode. The Black Death first hit Sicily around 1346. It spread from Sicily into Italy, France, Germany, Spain, Portugal, Great Britain. It also came from Thrace, Greece into kind of Eastern Europe, but mostly into Europe. Eastern Europe was not hammered as much by the plague as was the rest of Europe. And why was that? Well, people that lived in Eastern Europe didn't care much for silk or spices. So the merchants didn't travel into their communities, into their ghettos. What are the symptoms of the plague, the Yersinia pestis plague? Well, high fever, malaise, which is a great word. It means you just don't feel well. Prostration, which means you just can't get up. Rapid heart rate, rapid breathing, a rosette, a purple rosette rash sneezing, coughing, and mercifully, death. Current reservoir of Yersinia is, in, at least in the Americas, is rats, mice, squirrels, prairie dogs, but it's more of an endemic type thing. But we have antibiotics to treat it. They didn't have that in the 1300s, obviously. Tetracycline, chloramphenicol, aminoglycosides, they will kill the Black Plague. But let's look at it by the numbers. Over that eight year span, 30 to 50% of European population was killed. 30 to 50%. In some areas, 80% of communities died. Areas in, like in Germany and Great Britain, maybe only 20%. Worldwide, the Black Death of the 1300s killed 200 million people, or 25% of the world population. Can you imagine that? One in four people in the world were dead because of the plague. I mean, if you look at COVID over four years, it's seven million. It's, it's not much compared to the world population of seven billion or whatever it is. In fact, it killed so many people, the Black Death, that it took 400 years or the 1700s for the world population of Homo sapiens, of us humans, to get back to baseline before the plague had come upon us. So that's the story about the Black Death. I'll have other stories about how infections affected armies, especially Napoleon when he marched into Moscow. I hope you like these stories. I'm a storyteller. I have six books out, the History of Man series. This is the first History of Man. There's six. They're in print, in uh, e-Kindle, and in audio, and I narrate the audio. And I promise you, it's a jumping off story uh, type of writing. It's not for everyone, but there's a baseline, medicine and science, and I jump off into other, other areas of human inquiry, astronomy, philosophy, art, music, sports. So I hope you like these stories. There are others that you can find on YouTube. I'm John Bershaw. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And most of all, be well.